Hey guys, I'm Greg. Welcome to Greg's Berry Views today. Let's go see what's in the fridge today, guys. Hello, hello, hello everybody. Wasn't sure I turned everything on. I hesitated there for a minute. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. I do appreciate you stopping by. Can you hear me? Yeah, I think I got everything on. This looks like it's on. That looks like that's on. I think it's on. Hey guys, welcome. Uh, today's beer is Kane Brewing Company. This is their Sneak Box. Uh, this is an American Pale Ale coming in at a 5.20 percenter. Uh, I usually don't buy 5.20 percenters, uh, so this comes by the way of Rico, my brother. So Rico, thanks again, my brother. I do appreciate you sending me all the wonderful beers that you do. Uh, this beer uh, from Kane, uh, or most beers from Kane, are really tasty, guys. Uh, they really do some some really nice, wonderful beers. I'll have to say that uh, everything that I've been receiving that's been sent to me by uh, Rico and some others uh, uh, have been pretty tasty from this brewery. So these guys are in New Jersey. Uh, the can on the back here says Ocean, New Jersey. Uh, and the note he sent with this one, 5.4%. Well, beer average has got 5.2%. And I think Rico's right. I think this one has 5.4%. So once again, beer advocate uh, has misinformation. It does have 5.4%. And it does have the Candon date on the bottom of it. I'm sure he'll tell me what it is. So he bought it last week at the brewery for $15 for a full pack, which I think is a little on the steep side for 5.4 percent, guys. That's just my opinion, though. Uh, if you can buy a 8.2 percenter for $15, I would much rather, and that's what the overhead was from Kane, and it was $15 for a four pack. So I would probably much prefer to buy an 8.2 percenter as opposed to a 5.4 percenter for the same money but that's just my opinion though that's just me if you want a set more sessionable beer and something that's not going to make you too need ready too quick if you want to drink multiples this would be the way to go me uh, with my limited amount of beers that I can have per day I just assume go ahead and grab the 8.2 percenter instead of the 5.4 but like I said different strokes for different folks uh, the dates on the bottom lip edge of the can, he says, canned on April the 15th of 2019. Today is the 5th of May, Cinco de Mayo. So happy Cinco de Mayo day to everybody. I'm not drinking a Mexican beer here today. Don't have any. Don't buy them usually. They're very transitional. I haven't had a whole lot of uh, Mexican beers that would uh, get up into the A category. There are a few though, but uh, we're going to talk about this one. So, Rico, once again, thanks for sending me this. Uh, I do appreciate it, sir. So let's get on with this, guys, and see what we've got. Uh, let's jump over to Untapped and see if they have additional information, and they do not. They have 5.4%, no IBUs, no commercial description. So we're on our own uh, as far as that goes. So, big 16-ounce can, and it does look like a printed can, guys. So they've spent money on that, which they would probably just use a plain Jane silver can with a wraparound stick-on label, maybe save them some money, and not pass those costs over to, to the consumer. Just my opinion again. I'm just loaded with opinions today. So it is a big 16-ounce can, so let's get it into the glass to see what we got. See if we got a New England-style beer. Very hazy coming out. Very, very cloudy. Definitely looks like orange juice in the glass. I would think this is going to be a New England style pale ale. So I'm getting notes already this that far away. About a finger and a half of head on that. Guys, that looks just like orange juice in the glass right now. So awesome looking beer. And uh, 
to the nose we go. Like I said, I could smell it from there when I was pouring it, so let's get a little closer. Wow. Big time pungent citrusy notes. Hints of grapefruit and pine. Some tropical fruit notes, some mango and papaya, maybe even some apricots and peaches. It is just loaded with aromas. Wow. May even be some pineapple in there. This smells outstanding, guys. For a 5.0% pale ale, it smells absolutely outstanding. Mmm, makes me drool. Don't want that to happen. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. Oh, that is so smooth, so easy drinking. The alcohol is super well hidden. Not getting any at all on the taste. Very easy drinking. If you're looking, if the IPAs and double IPAs have too much bitterness for you, this would probably be the way to go. Jump into a pale ale that has this much hop presence. You're going to get that big tropical fruit notes and oranges and citrusiness and all the flavors that's usually associated with the New England style IPA, double IPAs, are in this and low, low alcohol are a lot lower at 5.4% than you're going to get from an 8.2 or whatever uh, and even a 10 percenter they do make those too we just did one uh, this one is to me got more aroma than the 10.2 or 10 point some percent we did the other day the uh, Outer Reef 10.7 triple IPA to me guys this has a better aroma on the nose and, and a little bit more hot presence in the taste you could drink two of these for one of those and have about the same amount of alcohol and you're going to get a whole lot of hot, more hot uh, aroma and taste in the beer so uh, even though i didn't enjoy the uh, outer reef i think uh, this style with the unfilteredness of it and the amount of hot aroma and taste fits this guy's bill a whole lot better so, wow, that is so smooth. It's almost like drinking orange juice. It's so smooth. Wow, very delicious. For what it is, like I said, it's down below my ABV range when I'm looking for beers to buy for myself, my go to beers, but I might have to rethink that if this was available here, which it's not. Uh, I would probably buy this and the other half would probably buy this even though it's a little bit lower ABV than what I like to pick up. I like to have that much hop aroma and flavor in the beer. So maybe I could have three if I was buying a five percenter instead of just two uh, and get about the same amount of calorie intake. So yeah, more would be better. Especially if I could still lose weight drinking three instead of two. That would work good for me. So, let's get the back end pour in here. We're going to swirl it around. I don't see how it could possibly change the appearance, but we want to make sure there's no settling going on in the bottom, in the can and to the bottom. And I don't see that changing it a whole lot. Of course, it's not that old. Only a couple weeks in the can. So, and buying them at the brewery like he's done on these, uh, it's about as fresh as you can get them when you buy them before they make them. So, great looking beer. Right out of the fridge, I'll sip on this one for a while and see what we end up with. Very impressive right now. Alright guys, we're back. Got just a little left in the glass here. Very, very tasty beer to me guys. Uh, even though it's only a 5.4 percenter. Uh, all the hop aroma uh, and taste that you want uh, in a beer, basically. Might be too much hop aroma and taste for some people. But I think it's very, very enjoyable for me. I love the New England style beers. Uh, and this will be very sessionable at 5.4%. That means you could drink several of them and not be too inebriated. Uh, a good transitional beer as far as I'm concerned. To get you out of the micro lagers into something with a whole lot more hop taste and not a ton of bitterings uh, on the beer. So uh, very, very nice beer. I can understand why they do this style of beer to try to get some of those transitional drinkers that's drinking something else, well, maybe a Bud Miller or Coors or something, into something with a little more hot presence to it. And made with quality ingredients, no adjuncts or corn or rice or any of that crap that they use to uh, 
keeping up the beer. It saves them from having to buy barley, which is more expensive than rice and corn, guys. That's why they do it. So, if they figure they can throw some of that junk in there and save on the barley bill, that's why they do it. So, it is what it is. It's cost effective. They're in there to make money, and they're making a ton of it. Evidently, they're making a ton of it because uh, ABM Bev is buying up uh, craft breweries as fast as they can get their hands on them. And then they snub their nose at us uh, on Super Bowl commercials and other things like that. So, they can just go themselves as far as I'm concerned. You'll never see me buy another Budweiser, Miller, or Coors. I'll stop drinking the damn, I'll stop drinking beer before I have to drink that crap anymore. I just soon drink water, or tea, or something, something else. So, with that being said, there's a, there's a market for that beer. There's people that want to go buy an 18, 24 pack for 15, 20 bucks, and drink them as fast as they can drink them, and feel like crap the next day. That's not why I drink beer anymore, guys. I did that for years and years and years. Felt like doo-doo the next day from all the beers that I drank the night before and felt like crap and uh, dehydrated and, and just, homie, don't play that game no more. Don't do it. Don't drink beer to get drunk. I don't anyway. Some of you young bucks, whatever, have at it, brothers. Uh, this is an awesome beer. It's an outstanding beer for what it is, a 5.4% pale ale. Awesome off the chain hop aroma and taste on this beer. It's absolutely outstanding to me for what it is. I'm not judging it for uh, alcohol content or anything else other than being a 5.4% off the chain hop aroma and taste orange juice looking beer. I love it. Outstanding. Final two. Very easy to drink, very smooth, no alcohol taste whatsoever to me. It's almost like drinking a glass of orange juice, but you're getting that benefit of the 5.4% alcohol. Excellent. Absolutely excellent. But guys, I'm going to go against the grade on this one. I think this is a tin beer for what I've had, for what it is. It is outstanding. If you like a nice pale ale, something with a low ABV content, uh, where you can drink multiples of them if you so choose to, this one has an outstanding hop aroma and a hop presence in the taste. So, very, very tasty beer. And guys, I would probably buy this beer even though it's below the ABV that I normally do. But it has got the taste and the aromas to go with it. Ten beer for me on this one, guys. Uh, over to Beer Advocate, they have it at 4.33. That's in their A scale. Over to Untapped, they have it at 4 even. That's in their A minus scale. I think it's a better beer than both of these guys are giving it. A lot better than Untapped is giving it. So, uh, definitely an A beer. It's A, A minus, A, and then A plus for me, guys. So, definitely an A beer. It's all over the A category from A minus to A plus. So, if you had the Cane Brewery sneak box, let me know what you think. Till we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.